James Oastland is the former editor-in-chief of Savour, one of America's most acclaimed food magazines. Under his tenure, Savour has won 40 major awards, including eight James Beards. He recently left Savour to bring his expertise to a new magazine called Rodale's Organic Life. It's going to launch in the spring of 2015. It's going to be about global food, wellness, gardening, interior design. A judge on Bravo TV's Top Chef Masters, James has authored several fabulous cookbooks, and I'm so looking forward to chatting with him about his love of Italy and Italian food. I'm so thrilled to be chatting with you about Italy. Tell me your connection with Italy. Where did the love start? Well, my connection with Italy is old. I, I grew up in San Francisco, and when I grew up, North Beach was always just around the corner, wherever I was. And San Francisco's version of, of Italian-American isn't so much Italian-American, it's purer, especially back then in the 1960s. It's more Italian-Italian, more Southern Italian. And so for me, really, my, my kind of core primal food memories, all of them actually surround Italian food, Italian cooking. And you, St started cooking? Did your family cook when you were young? My dad was the cook in, in the house. My mom, not so much. My mom was very, very good at opening bags of fr frozen food and heating them up. My dad, however, was an amazing cook. And when you went to Italy, what regions influenced some of your later love of Italian food? That's a great question, you know? The entire country, really, Yet, at the same time, the places I think that moved me the most were Bologna and around Bologna and all of that fabulous, rich, earthy food that just tastes like pure umami. And then also the foods of the Deep South, but in particular Salerno and all around Naples, that whole thing. and. You know, I mean, it's like you're in this completely different universe of foods and foodways when you're thinking about those two parts of Italy. Both of them, though, equally had this just great impact on me. 16 years at Savoy, nine years editor-in-chief. I'm so curious. How do you assign the Italian articles? What are some of the ways that you pick? Well, back when I was working at Savoy, Italian food and Italian, under, you know, really in a kind of greater way, understanding Italian culture through its just extraordinarily delicious and extraordinarily different foods was just a complete natural. Our readers were literally hungry for Italian content. You could, you could dedicate, you know, um, the entire magazine to sever every single year for years and years, decades and, de and decades, and still not begin to tell, you know, even part of the story. And the same goes um, now for my, for my new job at Rodale's Organic Life, where, you know, the, you know, those, going back to those really essential, primal ways in which Italian food is cooked, really all Italian food, I guess it probably wouldn't be an exaggeration to say, is, is just completely synchronous with the kind of material, the kind of content that our readers are looking for. It's the way they cook this very, very pure, unfancy, just gorgeous way of cooking that celebrates, you know, the delicious taste of an ingredient. And the fact that you can do all the trickery in the world in the kitchen, but if you don't have really, really delicious, fantastic ingredients, you're not, yeah. And that's really, for me anyway, one of the great joys of Italian cooking. Do you have some favorite articles that you had assigned over the years that really stand out as capturing Italy for you? So, so many. Um, there was one in particular that we did. It was uh, an Easter in Sicily. Gorgeous story, beautiful food. But I think my very favorite Italian piece in Sever over the years 
was many years back, it was either 96, 97, or 98, I can't remember the exact year, um, the entire staff then at Cibera collaborated on it and it was a piece, um, piece, huge, huge piece, really a, more of a package than a piece about Venice and the foods of Venice, the foodways of Venice, and really, as I was saying, the culture of Venice is what this was about. And it was something like 45 pages long and it was eye-poppingly beautiful. And oh, that food and that piece, it's just, oh, I, 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 can, I can picture some of the recipes and some of those uh, dishes that were covered in there now. I wish I could be eating it right this second. <laughs> I mean, that's what I love about when you're in charge of an article or you write your own or books, you add so much color, the culture, the travel, the history. It's um, one of the things I so admire about your work. Hey, I mean, my kind of like internal motto, you know, if you're really interested in understanding a place that you're not so familiar with, understand, have a look at what that place eats. There is no better way to be edified or really to get at the very heart and soul of a culture than to, to taste what it eats. And it's also a very pleasurable way to do your, your, your anthropology. You have made me hungry. You've inspired me. I think we should cook something together. We'll have some lunch. I've made myself hungry. I'm ready to eat right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your love for Italy. It was such fun chatting with you, James. Oh, it's, Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure.